Rub up your engines! Well, I'm laughing my heinies out. Uh, GM just lost two of their executives. Oh, I'm really crying over that one, right? They make so many mistakes, I think they should lose all of their executives, right? GM's executive vice president of global manufacturing sustainability. There is a horse manure title, if I ever heard him. Gerald Johnson retired. He's 61. And he also said that Mike Abbott, who's only 51, who's the executive vice president of software and services, is leaving the company. Now, he only joined him in May 20. 23. So he hasn't been there that long, right? But he was the former vice president for Apple's cloud services division, right? And GM, oh, Mary Barra said, oh, we're going to be a software company. We're going to lead in baloney. You can't even make cars that work. Forget making the software company out of GM. And hilarious enough, last month, Mary Barra raved about the guy who just retired after being a short time doing software said, he's brought an incredible team, hired people from Google, Apple, Meta. We've revamped the software development. Okay, so now the guy's gone, and here's what she says. 2024 is a year of execution. That's what she calls it, a year of execution. What is this, the French Revolution? Off with his head, off with his head, right? I think that guy left. They always say it's health reasons, right? Now, I can see it for the 61-year-old guy, but the other guy isn't very old, right? I think the guy saw the handwriting in the wall like, man, this is a messed up company. I'm getting the heck out of here. I don't want to get involved in this, right? The rats are leaving the GM sinking ship, I would say. I love the horsemen of the yards give about the people leaving. The other guy who'd been there for a while, the 61-year-old guy, Mary Barra says, Gerald's leadership, vision, and relentless pursuit of excellence in manufacturing have left an indelible mark on GM. Yeah, indelible. They make crappy vehicles that don't work, right? It is an indelible mark. <laughs> Look at those junkers they're building. Hey, can't they make them better? No, his indelible mark is junky vehicles that nobody wants to buy. <laughs> well, anybody that has any sense doesn't want to buy. So, yeah, GM. <laughs> Looks like as it sinks, the rats are jumping off of the ship, right? <laughs> I just can't believe that they have such positions myself. You know what, GM? You got too many chiefs and not enough Indians, right? That's the problem. You got all these guys making money on these positions that probably are useless, right? <laughs> Man, these corporations, to me, they need radical shakeups. But, of course, it's not going to happen because, you know, they're all looking out for themselves. You ever see board of director meetings that are all know each other and half the company's one board of directors has got similar guys, sometimes the same exact guys on one company to another. It's a good old boy network, right? <laughs> well, I was reading an article in the street, car insurance companies have found a sneaky way to raise your rates. If you've ever seen, I'll say, oh, you want to save money? Put this little dongle in your OBD port on your car, and then it reports to them what you're doing if you take fast turns, drive fast, right? They collect all that information, and guess what? Then they'll raise your rates because they say you drive weird, right? Now, one, who wants company spying on you to begin with? What I've warned people over and over and over again is you do not want to put those dongles on your onboard diagnostic port in your car. It's called an OBD port because that's what it is, onboard diagnostic port. It's made for diagnosing what's wrong with the car. It's not made for driving your car with it plugged in. Now, if you have a BMW or something, you plug them in, and there's even a warning that says, warning cars in diagnostic mode, do not drive on highway, yada, yada, yada. But any car, they're not designed for that. I have had customers plug them in to save money on their insurance, theoretically, and then their car started acting up. And then the company Company, in this case, it was State Farm. They refused to admit that there was a problem in the device. It's patently absurd. These things are not made to be plugged in all the time. They're onboard diagnostic ports. And I warn people, do not keep things plugged in there. If you've got some Chinese dongle, if it shorts out, it can destroy your car's computer, cost you thousands of dollars, you could be stranded somewhere. Those are only for plugging in when you're diagnosing what's wrong with the car. You don't leave something plugged in all the time. And heaven forbid, you want all that information, even if it is working, to go to the insurance company? Hey, not me. Hey, how about a little privacy here, people? Well, I got to agree with CNBC. They just had an article. EV euphoria is dead. Automakers trumpet consumer choice for U.S. car shoppers. Like, I didn't see this one coming, right? And I told people, the government can push all this crap all they want about electric cars. People do not want them. And it is a market. 
people buy cars, right? Are they gonna buy electric cars? They're not that interested in it. All the people that I see, almost every single one of them, says, I have no interest in electric cars as it stands today. I have people brought me electric cars and they told me, this is it, I'll never get another one for the foreseeable future because it's too much of a pain in the butt traveling anywhere with it. The only people I've seen satisfied with electric cars are people that a small commute, 10, 12 miles to work back and forth and they charge it up and they're happy with the car, right? So the average American, they want something that's convenient, get them where they're going, not have any problems, not have to worry about running out of electricity, right? And it's showing up now. Even automakers are realizing it. They're business people. They have to sell their cars. They got electric cars. Nobody wants to buy, right? I go to car dealerships and I have customers that go to car dealerships and they all say the same thing. We talk to the people and they say, we got these electric cars, we don't sell them, we don't want them anymore to try to sell them to people. People are buying hybrids, yeah, hybrids are hot now, right? But they have a regular engine, you don't have range anxiety. With a hybrid, you can actually go further than any gasoline car that can go 350 miles. Well, you might have a hybrid car that can go 550 miles, so range anxiety isn't there, right? And these idiots trying to push this electric car stuff, typical political horse manure, God knows what's behind it, right? It's time for it to stop. Stop trying to push this on people because the manufacturers are realizing people aren't going to buy this stuff. We're not going to make it. Well, if you think trucks are getting ridiculously large, you're not the only one. Check out this picture. <laughs> Look at that. The guy's working on one truck and it's so big it won't fit in his garage anymore. The other truck barely fits in the garage and he's got to park one truck this way, one truck the other way, so he can get in and out of the trucks. Otherwise, if they're both parked in his driveway, there's no room to open the door on one of them because they're taking up all the space, right? And that's a relatively big two-car garage he's got there. It's gotten to the point of absurdity with some of this stuff. The size of these trucks, do you really need something that big, right? And of course, the bigger they are, the more they cost. I had a guy a couple weeks ago bought himself a used truck. I said, well, why didn't you buy a new truck? He said, well, I looked at the Ford dealer and a brand new truck was 81,000 loaded. What I wanted was an F-150. <laughs> I said, well, I don't blame you buying a used one then instead, right? Because it was older, not quite as big. They're making these Titanic vehicles. I guess it's like the last of the dinosaur ages, right? Make them as big as they possibly can. You always see one person's driving around in them, right? It's hard to cause right? Look at this guy says, finally wore my 2002 F-150. I needed another a long bed truck, but I couldn't find anything in my price range. So I got a 2011 F-150. And with that, I can't even touch the bottom tie down rings in the corner. The side rails that used to be under my armpits are now above my shoulders. What, Ford? Are you marketing exclusively to NBA players? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they get this idea, bigger is better, and they just can make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, that's not safe for everybody else, too, because giant vehicles like that, you get in a wreck. I don't care what they say about safety ratings these days. You get hit by some gigantic truck. Odds are you're the one who's going to go down, not the guy in the big truck, because it is humongous, and it's pure kinetic energy. The bigger object is going to push the smaller object out of the way. That's just a fact, right? So maybe eventually they'll start making trucks a little bit smaller, not keep making them because if they keep at this rate, they're not going to be just up to the gutter of the house. They're going to be over the top of the house. <laughs> The people be driving these things around. Well, another electric battery company is going down the tubes. Ballard Power, it's a Canadian company. It sinks to the newest 52 week low because they're not making any money. They gave their earnings and down and went another 10% because they're not making any money, right? Now, if you didn't know, Ballard Power Systems makes hydrogen fuel cells for buses, commercial trucks, trains, marine vessels, and stationary powers. And as usual for this crazy electric electric stuff they're trying to push on people. The last quarter, they lost $48.9 million. They keep bleeding money, these companies, right? Shows it's not economically viable. And that's a 77% higher loss than it was last year. They say, well, don't worry, we'll make money in the future. They're actually losing more money in the future in this case. I always love the reasoning too. This Ballard officer, what does he say? We think the shrinking backlog and order book surprised many investors and continues to put downward pressure on a 20. 24 revenue, downward pressure. They're losing money faster than they can count it, right? It's showing all these people are stupid if they're investing in these companies because it's unproven technology. Nobody knows if it's going to ever be implemented, 
right? Don't throw your good money into companies like this unless you're just willing to lose it all because they run through money really fast, paying themselves, of course. The guys that run the corporation, in this case, Ballard, they're obviously paying themselves big salaries and all that stuff, stock options, whatever, while they're losing money this year, 77% more money they lost than even last year. And they keep saying, well, it's electric stuff. It's, it's coming to fruition. We're going to use it. No, it might not be for decades, if ever. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.